PhD student in history and African American studies at Yale, even though I am wearing my alma mater sweatshirt this morning. I am going to take you along for a little weekend in my life. Today is a Friday and I'm actually going to be heading to campus today. I have a couple books that I need to check out. I also have some things that I'm doing for my research position. I have some documents that I need to scan. I have about three weeks and counting until I head to London for my research trip and I'll be there for about a month. I have a lot to accomplish in the meantime. I have to get everything squared away with the businesses. I just hired two new consultants. We're currently interviewing marketing interns for Katie and administrative interns for Chanel. It's been busy, but it's been really exciting. I'm making good progress on my prospectus. So I'm gonna take you along and I'm also gonna give you a little bit of a life update throughout this video because I've been meaning to sit down and do a life update video, but I figured I might as well add it into a vlog. So stick around if you wanna know what's going on this summer, what my plans are and everything that's on my mind. So let's go ahead and get this vlog started. another voiceover. So after going to Atticus and doing a little bit of admin, I headed over to the library to pick up a couple of different books. So one of the books I was picking up is the House of Commons Session Records from the 18th Century, which I was actually picking up for my research position, which ended up becoming really important for my research and my dissertation. I also picked up this other book about the General Assembly for Maryland. And once I sat down in the library, I got digging into these books. And as you'll see from the look on my face in a moment, I made some interesting discoveries. One of the most important aspects or methodologies for my dissertation is to construct a database of the general assemblies from the various colonies in the English Atlantic in the 17th century and to trace the various slave codes and where they're enacted. And this book actually gave me a starting point to actually begin my database, which is one of the most exciting stages of beginning the work on the dissertation and the prospectus because I didn't think that I was gonna be getting started on this until I went to the archives this summer. But what was really cool about these books is that they had the transcripts from the sessions papers of the House of Commons, which included the different slave laws that were enacted throughout the Atlantic world. And while many of them were primarily for the 18th century, and they also had some interesting diagrams and tables, I at least had some information where I could start constructing the overall skeleton of the database. After getting a couple hours in working on the database, I decided to head on out and then I didn't record for the rest of the day. So now we're on to tomorrow. Hello friends, good morning. It is now Saturday. I did not record for the rest of the day yesterday because honestly I came back and tried to take a little bit of a breather. I had a bunch of admin yesterday and I just keep falling behind on things, but I just needed to rest a little bit because my brain was a little scattered after working on my dissertation prospectus yesterday. I have a lot of things going on in my mind in terms of that project and how it is that I want to convey it to my advisor. But I am up this morning, slept in a little bit. It's about 9.30 now. Have my cup of coffee in hand. I have brunch with my friend Ash in about an hour, and I have some client work that I wanna do before then, but I wanted to chat a little bit about my findings yesterday and a little bit about where things are with my dissertation. All right, so let's chat a little bit about the dissertation and where I'm at in my program. So I just finished up my second year of the PhD at Yale, which means that I'm officially complete with coursework. I only have one more class that I need to take, which is my Spanish for reading course. For those of you that have been following since last summer, you know that I had to actually drop the course last year because I fell far behind, but I'm trying to stay on top of it this year. I also have other materials that I'll be looking at to prepare for that class. Then I have one 
one other colloquium for my AFAM requirements. I'll walk you guys through the kind of general structure of my program. So the first two years are meant to be spent doing coursework. You have a certain number of classes you are required to take. However, because I have a master's coming into the program, I was able to not have a second semester of my second year. So all I ended up focusing on was my comprehensive exam preparations, which I think went really well. I feel very solid about the readings that I've done so far. I still have more that I'll have to do over the summer. And I think I might take the exam in like October. And then I'm planning on defending my prospectus probably in November. You're required to complete your qualifying exams and your prospectus defense by the end of your third year. I'm planning on getting it done a little bit early, mostly because I just wanna get it out of the way. And that would mean that in the spring semester, I would just be teaching, which to me sounds ideal. So I'm trying to like front load a bunch of the work into the fall. So that way the spring is a little bit easier on me. And that way I can also begin working on the dissertation and actually start writing chapters. And hopefully I will find enough material this summer in order to corroborate that. At the moment, the project that I'm considering has two primary facets to it. It's looking at the original general assemblies in Virginia and I think Barbados. The justification for picking those two is because they were the first colonies to enact comprehensive slave codes. However, I might also look at Maryland as an example because Maryland attempted to enact a matrilineal descent slave code around the same time as Virginia, but they never actually did. And so I have questions about why. This part of the dissertation is based on a database that I'm trying to build. I have a lot of archive digging to do, but I'm really honestly excited about the way that the project has developed, mostly because when I came into doing this project, I was really focused on how did the Partis Equator Ventrum law come to be, why and what impact it had on our concepts of black motherhood. Ultimately, that's still the crux of the project. However, I finally feel like I have a strong application for it. Every time I talk to clients, for example, that are applying to graduate school through Accepted Consulting or the members at Acceptance Society, I often tell people it's great to have a concept and to have an idea, to have a thesis and general set of questions that you're looking to ask, but also try to ground it in actual evidence and how it is that you're actually going to develop that study. And I think I finally have a bit of an in in terms of where to look in the archive. And so I have my research trip this summer and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the video. So if you wanna know about all my travel plans for the summer, then make sure to stick around because I have a lot of things that I'll be doing in London this summer. I actually end up having, I'm actually going to have to go back to London twice before teaching begins in the fall. Very excited and also very blessed that I have a grant that can support my research abroad this summer, which is super helpful. But now I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. I would say one of the best and most dynamic things about my life is that I get to balance both being a PhD student as well as managing a business that is constantly growing. YouTube and my businesses work hand in hand with my PhD because it's a creative outlet and it also allows me to think about how to use my time effectively and how to make sure that I'm making time for the things that really matter to me, including things like moo or being able to go out with friends. really lovely brunch along the water with my friend Ash. I came home and ended up co-working with Katie and Chanel. Chanel is my assistant and Katie is the head of marketing at Accepted. And although we work together for Accepted, we also hang out together to support one another through our work. The both of them held me accountable as I had to knock off a couple things on my to-do list that I've been avoiding over the last couple of days. This included a lot of personal as well as business admin. With hiring comes training and training documents, so I wanted to make sure that I set up the procedures for the following week with the upcoming hires, as well as managing personal admin like setting up doctor's appointments and making sure that everything is up to date for my upcoming travels. These are all the things that I've been avoiding. 
it is obviously much later now and I ended up basically working all day after I had brunch with Ash. Got a lot of work done. I actually managed to get through my entire Sunday to-do list because I've been putting off some things and I really needed to just kind of have a bit of a refresh day to get things focused and done. I had wanted to be done at 5 p.m. this evening. That obviously did not happen, but ultimately I got the client documents out of the way. I did a bunch of projects with Katie and Chanel. I have a couple things that I needed to do for my managers, for Kayla and Natalie. It's been a really good day. I feel really excited about everything that we're working on. Katie and I are actually launching a podcast and there will likely be more information about it in the description and a little later in this vlog because we're gonna record tomorrow. And came up with the name, The Scholarpreneurs. I wanted a name that would encapsulate the personal as well as the professional goals that we have and our work as academics. And it's a play on words that I really liked. So that should be launching soon. We're gonna do it in seasons. We're gonna do it in three seasons. And I think it'll be about 12 episodes per season. And I wanted to give a little bit of an update about Accepted because I was working on client documents today and I wanted to chat a little bit about how it's been growing and everything. I just hired two new consultants to join on the humanities side because humanities is our highest enrollment kind of subject matter for accepted clients. The second would be the social sciences and then the third would be the hard sciences. And we get clients from all over the world. We just hit a new record. So so we've worked with over 400 clients in the last just under two and a half years. And that's just incredibly exciting. The team is growing really quickly. And the reason that I'm scaling is because I am taking a bit of a step back from working with clients and I'm focusing instead on getting the team a bit more self-sufficient and really thinking about our larger outreach mission because I really would like to go into community colleges and transfer centers and be giving workshops on graduate school admissions and research and those types of things. I would also like to build out my portfolio portfolio in terms of public speaking for topics related to school and entrepreneurship, admissions, etc. In order to do that and in order to do my best work as a PhD student, I need to focus on running the businesses instead of being so deeply involved in the day-to-day -day work. And so I am taking a step back. I'm not taking any new clients going forward until I am done with my comprehensive exams. So I'm taking my oral exams likely in October, and then I will probably take some new clients after that. But for right now, I have quite a few clients on my own plate and so I want to make sure that they're getting the quality support that they deserve and it's been a crazy cycle already. We have already hit numerous goals for the business and I think it's one of those things where originally I used to have really ambitious goals for what I wanted Accepted to become and what I really want it to be but ultimately I'm just letting it grow organically and trying to think about how it is that we can satisfy demand and how it is that we can produce more resources for people. So for example I've invested a bunch of time and money and whatnot into relaunching the blog and trying to think of other ways that we can get involved in outreach programming. So lots of hiring and lots of growth, but growth so that way I can take a bit of a step back in the on the ground work so that way I can focus on my PhD primarily this year, especially in the fall, and that I can shift around and delegate some of my responsibilities so that way I can focus on the things that are really important at the moment. And Accepted Society moved on to a new platform that's been going really well. I actually did a live study with me just for the members. I've gotten a couple questions about doing the live study with me on YouTube and I will still do them every once in a while, but I'm starting to do them more so for the Accepted Society members. So if you want to have regular accountability and support, then I recommend checking out Accepted Society instead of just relying on my YouTube channel. And we are hiring an administrative intern for Chanel and we're hiring a marketing intern for Katie. Those applications will have been closed by the time this video goes up. So fortunately we already hired, but we have 
five people that we're interviewing for the marketing role, which is crazy. And I'm starting to try to give Katie and Chanel a bit more responsibility and just trying to give them opportunities to learn. And so I'm excited to see how it goes with the interviews and everything. And Katie's really excited about the different candidates that we have lined up and it's all good things. So that is my little accepted update. It's been growing my little, my little child of a business. I just really love accepted. It's something that I feel really passionate about and that I think about a lot. I just really like our clients and I really love the work that we get to do and the team and everything that we're working towards. So that's my little update on accepted. Everything's really good. And I'll give you the rest of my little life updates throughout the rest of this video. Tomorrow is Sunday, which means that we have the writing workshop for the exclusive members of Accepted Society, which is perfect because I have some work I wanna do in the Maryland legislature book. I have some scans and things that I need to get to my PI for my research position and all the things. So I got through my to-do list today. Let's see how we end up doing tomorrow, but I'm gonna go ahead and go on to bed, take a little shower and do a little bit of reading. Now here is where the fun begins. Now we are doing some literature and archival research. So when I'm looking for archives, I first go into the secondary literature to see what manuscripts were cited in my favorite historian's work. When planning a research trip, you often have to set up a booking with the research institution in order to tell them what day you're coming and to order the documents that you're meant to be looking at. In order to book the documents, you need their reference numbers. So here I'm just scanning the secondary literature for the reference numbers for the records I'm looking at. Super productive writing session. I did a bunch of work on my plans for, hold on, let me adjust this. Got a bunch of work done making my plans for my archival trip in London. I booked out a couple of days that I'll visit the National Archives in Kew. I'm also gonna be going to the Parliamentary Archives at Westminster, which I'm really excited about. I didn't realize that the Parliamentary Records were separate from the National Archives and it sounds silly, but I'm just really excited to get to explore a little bit more of London while also going to these archives. Also just kind of generally made a list of all the things that I need to do before the trip. And I'm just trying to get myself sorted. So for example, if I have the days booked at the archives around London, and the only thing I still need to book is a visit to the archives at Oxford and a visit to the archives at Cambridge. However, I still need to email that one professor about the archives at Cambridge because I need the actual reference numbers. So as I said in the little voiceover, when you go to book a archival trip at a records office or a library, then they usually have like a code that is the reference number for the document. And so you book the visit and then you also tell the archivist or you tell the library which documents you want to look at. So you enter the number into your booking. So that way it's ready for you when you get there and you can just pick it up and go. But I don't know what the actual documents I need for Cambridge are. So I just need to get in touch with that professor. So that way I get a better idea. I feel a little burnt out on House of Common session records and things for today. So I am gonna take a little bit of a breather and I'm just going to sit here and do a little bit of reading. I've got The Maidens by Alex Michaelitis. I'm currently reading so many books at once, but I get not bored with a particular book, but I get like a different type of vibe that I want from a book when I am reading fiction. And so I'm currently reading the second Bridgerton book, The Viscount That Loved Me, Portrait of a Mirror. I'm about halfway done with that one. I'm also reading Freed by E.L. James. And yes, that is the Christian Grey version of Fifty Shades, which I feel kind of embarrassed talking about, but like I enjoy it. And so I'm reading it and then I am reading Working Hard, Hardly Working by Grace Beverly, Empowered by V by V Kativu. And I'm starting this one. I'm also reading A Court of Thorns and Roses for Book Club for Accepted Society. I'm also reading Atlas of the Heart by Brené Brown for Accepted Society's Book Club. So I'm reading a lot of random books at once. It's just how my brain works. Sometimes I really wanna read fiction. Sometimes I really wanna read nonfiction. Sometimes I wanna read for my research. And sometimes I just want something that's easy to read. So my easy reads are always like Fifty Shades or Twilight, which judge me all you want, but 
those are the books that if I don't want to think and I just want to read for the sake of reading, those are the books that I gravitate towards and I will reread them over and over again. However, if I want to think about it and I want beautiful writing, I will turn to the classics. That was a really long rant about fiction, but I'm going to sit here. I'm going to read The Maidens for a little while because it's set at Cambridge and I'm just getting really excited about going back to England. And then Katie and I are recording the podcast. So I am gonna do this for a little while and then do that with her and then take the rest of the night off because I have been working really hard this morning and I just wanna sit on my couch with my dog and watch a documentary. So that's what I'm going to do. So here we go. On campus, I'm heading over to Fussy Coffee this morning. I was gonna end the vlog yesterday, but figured I'd continue on to today. Lots of dissertation work to get done. So I am working on my dissertation prospectus as I have for the last couple of days. I have a couple of their archives that I wanna dig into that are actually digitally available. So I wanna see what's possible and then come up with a little bit of a plan for my meeting with my advisor later this week. So I'm going to take a nice little walk through campus, take you along with me. On my walk to Fussy Coffee, I listened to my new favorite podcast, Diary of a CEO with Steve Bartlett, and then sat down to make up my plan for the day. I was planning on looking at some of the archival materials at Oxford, but honestly just ended up getting sucked into some secondary literature. I was working on taking some thorough notes on two articles by Holly Brewer, her most recent article, A Common Law of Slavery, as well as one on Lockean theory. Ultimately, today was just about the secondary literature and working my way through it so that I can cite it in the literature review section of my prospectus. And in the afternoon, I headed out for a date. I'm home for my date and nothing special to report. I just find dating difficult because I find people so like there's no passion there's no excitement about their lives or their careers or the things that they're interested in and I don't know guys I don't know I ended a long-term relationship that I had about a year ago and I haven't really been dating since I've gone on a couple dates here and there but I haven't really you know given it a go since because I wanted to focus on my businesses and honestly there was just some things that I needed to work through after my last relationship and finally getting back out there and I'm just bored. It was a really boring conversation and I have a rule with dating that even if it's a really bad date, like at least learn something from it. Try to stay at least like 45 minutes and try to improve your communication skills and that kind of thing. Like use it as a learning experience. And it wasn't a very bad date. It was just a very bland. I went and got myself a cookie at Insomnia and some dinner. Came home, watched a little bit of a documentary. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wind down for the night, but wanted to give you guys my little life update in this video. And today was mostly about getting work done and all of that. And so I didn't do another little life update, but I guess last kind of life update thing is, is just about life and about my relationship with my friends and my family, just general relationships and also my relationships with YouTube, dating, I'm trying. I'm gonna give it a good shot again because what I learned with my last relationship was that I do actually want to be a partner to someone and I also want a partner for myself. There were parts of that relationship, I would say 85% of that relationship that were really great. There was a pretty solid part of it though that just didn't ever feel right and I didn't feel like I could be entirely myself or that, not that I couldn't be myself, but that the person who I was and that I wanted to be wasn't really appreciated. Now I have a set of standards for myself and what it is that I want in a partner, but I'm trying to actively date again and make time for it because I think it is important. In my early 20s, I didn't quite get why people wanted to date and why they wanted to have a relationship. I just felt like that was a bit of a hindrance to your aspirations, but now I get it and I see my 
closest friends in their relationships getting married and moving out to those stages of their life with another person and realizing that I don't really have that. I'm really happy with where my life is at the moment. I'm really loving my PhD program. Businesses are doing incredibly well and growing exponentially. And I feel like I have a good balance. Like it's 8.30 right now and I'm about to get ready for bed and I get to read things that I really enjoy in addition to the things that I enjoy for my research. And I feel like every aspect of my life is doing quite well. However, I come home and I have Moo and I'm really happy having the life that we've built together, me and Moosif. But I also at times just wish I had somebody to share these things with because I don't know, I love my life and I'm really excited about it and I want to be able to share it with people. And in terms of friendships and whatnot, I'm just learning that there are certain ways that I communicate where I haven't been as understanding or compassionate and the reason is that I am starting to figure out how my brain functions. The one thing that I've struggled the most with is that throughout my life, when there's a moment of doubt or fear, I have always not really seen any other option but to get through it. So I wasn't very understanding when people felt the need to take a step back or not quite knowing what they wanted to do with their careers. I was so stuck on the, I just don't get it, that I didn't take a second to say, you don't have to understand it for yourself. It's not something that you yourself have to be willing to do. That's not what is helpful to that person. What's helpful to that person is you listening and being understanding, even if you couldn't figure out how their brain works. And I, I'm still trying to figure out what that entails, but learning that I do have certain tendencies to be an all or nothing, like go getter kind of personality. And I know that that's been very helpful in some sense, obviously with my schoolwork and with my businesses, but it's also a bit of my downfall because it means that I'm not as understanding as I want to be or should be. Ultimately, there's just things that I can be improving upon to be a better human, to be a better person. The last thing that I want to talk about a little bit is my relationship with YouTube. And I've had a lot of trouble with my YouTube channel in the last couple of months. And I think that maybe some of you have been able to notice, but the problem isn't the actual like videos. It's really the growth of the channel has also been accompanied by a lot of demands and a lot of hate comments and I didn't quite know how to deal with it because for example I wanted to make the how to read video for years but I wanted to do it right and I'm glad that I took the time to do it right because the video has performed really well and I'm really proud of it. It's the product that I really wanted. I kept getting comments every time I mentioned the video or when I would post a video and it wasn't that one that people would be like, where is it? You said it would be here. And I know that they mean well, but I've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of direct messages, just being very demanding of me and my content and being very demanding about details about my personal life and going to my friends. For example, when I don't post and wanting to know things about my personal life that some things I should be able to keep private if I want to and the things that I feel like I want to share with you all I will. There's a bit of a challenge that I have with the way my audience has grown and what that has developed into and so I was having trouble kind of getting on an upload schedule because I was thinking to myself why am I not passionate about editing these vlogs? Why am I what do I feel kind of disconnected from my audience? What do I feel disconnected from my content? And so when I was in California, I did a lot of reflecting and thinking about it and ultimately came to the conclusion that I need to remind myself of the reason I started my YouTube channel and that that needs to be my driving force. And the reason I started my YouTube channel was that there was content that I wanted to see that was not being produced and that is now the content that I want to be a part of. There were YouTubers that were really pivotal to me. When I was watching them, I felt comforted because they were going through a lot of the same things that I was about to experience or that I was currently experiencing or that I had experienced in the past. And I just felt very comforted by them. But the one difference is that I never cross that boundary of like, for example, if they took a step back from YouTube or if they started posting content that I wasn't super thrilled about, then ultimately I just realized that, okay, their life is 
going in a slightly different direction. It's not something I feel connected to anymore that I'm just not going to follow. Or I will give them their, like, I'm, I'm not going to message them and ask why they're not around. And I think that that's the thing I'm struggling with is feeling like there's so much demand from my audience at times. And I know the regulars, like I know the people who are kind and who comment every video. I notice your names and I try to interact with you on like Instagram DMs and you you all really mean a lot to me. This channel means the most to me, but I have to remind myself that I started the channel for me and I produce the content because I want it to be helpful to you, but I also want it to be something that I'm proud of and that I want to put out there. And so I just was thinking about that and that really impacted, for example, the way I filmed this video. And so I have little rambly bits where I'm giving little updates and things, but that's because I want to look back on this video and think about this moment as this really pivotal time in my PhD where I've just finished up the second year and I'm heading into the stage where I'm taking my exams, defending my prospectus and moving on to the dissertation. And it's both absolutely terrifying, but also so incredibly exciting. I'm getting to travel this summer. This summer is going to be incredible and I just don't want to miss it. I don't want to forget it. And when I think about making content for other people, I ultimately stop loving my content. I stop feeling like I'm producing the content that I really love. And so I want you to love the videos too. It's, I don't know, it's a difficult thing because I want it to be something that's useful to you all, but I also need to love it. And I'm still trying to figure out what that looks like, but I really loved this video. I, it was a little bit different. I really wanted to dig into uh, some of the voiceovers and play a little bit with the editing. So I hope that you noticed, I hope you enjoyed it. And I am gonna do more vlogs before I head out to London. So if you're new and you wanna stick around, then please, please hit the subscribe button. And if you have been around for a while, thank you all so much for sticking with me and for being part of this incredible journey that is academia. And no, I've been a little inconsistent, but I finally feel really good about my videos again. I finally feel really good about my life and where I'm at at the moment. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, because it really helps the channel when you do. And I will see you in some upcoming videos. So I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.